Okay, so I wanted to go through your MRI report on an actual anatomy model and show you what all of this really means, what it's talking about. So I'm just going to go through the MRI and go into the impression. So number one, an extremely high grade but probably incomplete tear at the biceps labral anchor with diffuse biceps tendinosis and essentially 360 degree labral tearing. Let's start there. So I'm going to take off layers of muscle and we'll just get way deep in there. So I took off your delt. I'm going to actually show you underneath this. So I've kind of pre-done this guy up to look a little bit more like yours in real life. So if you can see in here, this tendon sheath right here, this is actually just a sheath that goes around your biceps tendon and then it actually connects to the underside of this ligament a little bit and then the other side actually is on top of this like fibrous membrane so if we take off that and we get down to just the joint and take the muscle off let's look at this first so when we are in the actual shoulder joint this is your humeral head and this is your glenoid. So your glenohumeral joint is your shoulder joint. So whenever you're reading that, that is what that means. Um, let's see, at the biceps tear anchor and a 360 degree labral tear. So let's add on your labrum. So the labrum is gonna be underneath this. So I'm actually gonna cut it away so you can see this right here is just a synovial membrane like it just kind of encapsulates the joint that's what the fluid lives in like that synovial fluid you'll hear about so if we just cut part of this off so that we can see in it all right inside here this little rim that is your labrum so in real life it actually comes out just a little bit more, but it adds depth, it adds cushion, um, and just kind of strengthens that shallow bone and bone on bone attachment there. Okay, so when it says 360 degree tear, I think you can kind of figure out that that means the whole surrounding part of this is worn and torn, basically. So you might have like little tears in it here, you might have like a flap that's kind of coming up, if it feels like it gets pinched on something or something is locked in there, a lot of times that is labrum type sim sim symptoms. Um, other thing I wanted to point out when we're in here is we're in it, whenever I talk about bone spurs or osteophyte changes, things like that, a lot of times they occur underneath this bony shelf here and coming off of this glucoid process, so keep that in mind. But the tendon through your biceps is going to run right through here, and it's going to actually attach to the labrum. So when I put that on, all right, this tendon, let's zoom it out. That is your biceps tendon. So when you hear people talking about they tear their biceps tendon, a lot of times it's this one, um, especially if you hear slap tear, which is on your MRI report. It's where the superior labrum uh, tears anterior posterior, like this way. But all you need to know is that where your biceps tendon comes up and attaches right there, pretty significant tear. It says incomplete, so it's not like it's completely detached, but it's pretty significant. Um, and then let's see, moderately severe tendinosis of the rotator cuff tear with both Intra, substance, and insertional partial thickness tears. Okay, so what that basically means is the rotator cuff, where this comes underneath here, is one place where you'll frequently hear people having a rotator cuff tear. Usually, something underneath here will start rubbing, this space won't be as big, and you'll get small little tears. And actually, this, this white part, this tendon actually goes usually a little farther back. The other part, um, back in here, again, if you've got any kind of funky changes going on, you can have issues there. But generally, most of the tears are supraspinatus tear and they're up here, unless there's trauma. But a wear and tear one is usually up here. 
Oh, right. Uh, anytime you see tendinosis or anything like that, where a tendon is, is inflamed, is what that means. So the attachment sites are painful. Things are swollen and inflamed. And then loose body in the axillary pouch measuring 12 millimeters. Your axillary pouch is really just like your armpit is a fancier word for saying that. So something down in here that we discussed, you know, would be down in that area. Just kind of free floating, tucked away in there. Can be problematic. Okay, so wherever there is red is generally where people tend to have pain and issues. Now, the way that PT works and why strengthening is so helpful is that when all of this rotator cuff musculature is stronger, it structurally supports this socket better and takes some of that pressure off of bone on bone things, helps support things better. So even though there is a lot of damage, a lot of times purely strengthening and working on mobility and just decreasing inflammation will help the symptoms anyways. And then let me put on, okay, so put on your muscle and then I put on the nerves where I needled you and the why. Adding all your nerves here. Okay, so anything that's yellow coming down is a nerve. Some of them are sensory nerves, meaning they do all of your sensations like pain, and then other ones are motor, meaning they supply the function of that muscle basically. Uh, where I always do on shoulders though, I always come out here in the mid-delt because there is a muscle and nerve innervation point there. If I take your muscle off, you'll see even more. So I did right back here by your axillary nerve. I came up to the top and I got your suprascapular nerve that if I take off another layer of muscle, this nerve here, it does the strength to your rotator cuff and it actually does sensation out here to your ball and socket joint into your AC joint. So all of those, I'm trying to kind of desensitize and get them to calm down.